I'm talking today with Erica Tong, who is the lead clinical pharmacist for general medicine, and Dr. Gary Yip, who's a general physician, uh, both here at the Alfred in Melbourne. Thank you both for your time. You. Now, you two are co-authors uh, on some research that's been published in our 16th of January issue about ways we can mitigate medication errors on discharge summaries. Tell us what the prevalence of those errors is and why we need to do something about it. Uh, so we've done some local audits of discharge summaries here yep. at the Alfred that showed that um, errors particularly in the medication section yep. of the discharge summary were quite high. Um, and so we were actually funded by the Department of Health, Victorian Department of Health, to conduct the study to, to see whether or not pharmacists could help improve the accuracy of the medication part of the discharge summary. What kind of errors are we talking about? Dosing errors? Are we talking about naming errors? What, what's the goal? Yeah, so there's lots of different types of errors. Sometimes um, there's a cut and paste of the admission meds into the discharge summary, so it means that none of the changes that have occurred in hospital end up in the discharge summary. Um, sometimes there are meds that have been ceased that are still put into the discharge summary. Sometimes there's, yeah, obviously incorrect doses, incorrect drugs. Yeah. Root, what? Gary, what does that mean for, for patients when we, when we make mistakes like this on, on discharge summaries? Yeah, I mean, I think that's often hard to assess, but clearly it has a, a long-term adverse outcome for a lot of people because transition of care is very important. Yeah. Um, if the message doesn't get through, then um, naturally things don't happen. I guess eventually. it makes it complicated for GPs as well, following up, etc. Well, that's the key stakeholder that's, um, that it affects. Really, yeah. Because most patients go back to their GP as their next port of call. Yes. If they don't have the right information, then they can't manage the patient correctly. So what was your theory in terms of because essentially you've inserted a pharmacist into this process. Why did you think that would make a difference and, and what did you actually find? So uh, in our general medical unit here at the Alfred, we have a fairly strong clinical pharmacy service. Our pharmacists are attached to the units yep. here. So there's one pharmacist per medical unit. Um, they round with the doctors. They're heavily involved in the admission process. We have a partnered pharmacist charting model where the pharmacists chart the regular meds in collaboration with the admitting registrar on admission. So we thought, discharges and other transition of care where there's a high risk of errors, let's get the pharmacist to be more involved in that. So we were already involved in every discharge anyway. Right. Um, so we essentially <coughs> got the pharmacist to be able to input into the medical discharge summary, the medications and the changes and reasons for changes. So you set up a couple of groups, obviously a control and an intervention group. What did you find um, at, the, at the end of the st study period? What was, what was the result? So we randomised patients, we had four units and we randomised two units to receive standard medical discharge summaries and two units to receive the pharmacist bit of the medication um, part of the discharge summary. Um, and we found that the errors in the medical arm were 61.5%. So 61.5% of patients discharge summaries had at least one error in them. Wow. Um, and on the pharmacist arm it was reduced to 15%. What does this do in terms of, of the pharmacist's workload? Does this increase significantly what they have to do on a daily basis? Not really, so um, essentially the intern or the pharmacist can start the discharge summary and they're working together. Yeah. Um, it it kind of saves time in the end because when these patients get readmitted, you've got a discharge summary that's yeah. correct. Yeah. And we also review the patients in a post-discharge follow-up clinic. Okay. And it's really useful obviously to have that information correct when a patient comes back for a review. So I think we see it as time saving in the end and obviously it helps with patient care. So basically this is a, a increasing what's already a multidisciplinary approach. Um, have you instituted this regularly at the Alfred? Yeah, so it's now rolled out to almost all of the medical units, okay. medical units across um, the organisation, um, and yeah, it's standard of care. And how, is, how, how are the rest of the team taking, are they cooperating with this and finding it helpful? Yeah, I suppose this institution's pretty strong in its <coughs> teamwork, um, yeah. and obviously that's not the case everywhere, but I mean, the idea is to leverage off this to replicate the teamwork because clearly um, teamwork is something that's beneficial to everyone. So, Can you see it rolling out to other hospitals? Is it something you're hoping will go and become a standard procedure? Yeah, I think pharmacists being involved in the communication to GPs about medications and changes during hospital is something that's really important. Um, I think they're really well placed to be able to do that. Yeah. Well, I think the workload issue is interesting because you can have a pharmacist doing a job and a, a doctor doing a job. But the pharmacists will make find it easier and perhaps quicker to do because they've been focusing on that. So yeah. I think in the modern era of interdisciplinary care, uh, it's not about everyone doing a job. Everyone needs to understand what everybody else is doing. Yeah. But then finally focusing on their bit 
and how that fits. I, mean, I, would, I would probably suggest thinking of some other strategies to build a teamwork before implementing a major yeah. tool like this because it'd be hard to, to use this as a focus of building teamwork. So you should probably do it the other way around where right. you've got the, the organic teamwork that's built already and then putting this on top as the, the cherry on top. Really. Thank you. Thank you both for your time. Thanks.